Hello everybody, I'm Liam Smith from A Shot of Wildlife and today I'm joined by Greg from Greg's Wildlife. We've come to the North Norfolk coast here at West Runton and we're going to spend a bit of time doing some rock pooling. We've got our waterproof cameras with us and we're going to go and see what species of wildlife that we can find. Let's go. Let's go. I don't usually like to cause disturbance whilst looking for wildlife, but with rock pooling, it's a bit of a necessity. We were careful whilst turning the rocks over and made sure we put them back afterwards. It didn't take long until we found our first creatures. The beadlet anemone is a common sight around the UK and mainland Europe. They grow up to 5cm across and although they are most usually red, we did see some that were orange and apparently they can be green as well. When the anemone is submerged, its 192 tentacles hang into the current to try to catch animals to feed upon. This includes fish, shrimp and crabs. When the tide goes out and the anemone is above the water level, they bring their tentacles into their bodies and look completely different. Whilst researching for this video, I discovered lots of interesting facts, including that beadlet anemones are very territorial and will attack their neighbours if their tentacles come into contact. I also found that they are mobile and can move along rock surfaces, albeit very, very slowly. With Greg's trainers already soaked through, he got stuck in and it didn't take him long to find the next species. This marine snail is the common or edible periwinkle. It's the largest periwinkle found in Britain and is common all over our coastlines. They don't like dry areas, so at low tides they can often be found sheltering in rock crevices or amongst the seaweed. They can be found in the ocean up to a depth of around 60 metres. It's primarily a herbivorous feeder using its hard tongue to scrape algae off rocks, but it will feed on small invertebrates too, such as barnacle larvae. Unlike land snails, which are hermaphrodites, periwinkles have separate males and females, and the females can lay between 10,000 and 100,000 eggs, which are ejected directly into the sea. The larvae hatch, and these feed on plankton before eventually settling to the bottom. As their name suggests, they are edible, and have been an important food source to prehistoric humans since at least 7,500 BC. They are still sold today, with an estimated 2,000 tonnes exported from Scotland annually. They are boiled and served with vinegar and pepper. We didn't try any today, uh, maybe next time. Underneath almost every rock we found a small group of common prawns. Unlike many other rock pool inhabitants, these guys were far from camera shy and would often approach us and end up too close to the lens for us to focus on. Common prawns can grow to up to 11 centimetres long and although they look mainly transparent, they can have coloured bands around their body, often green, red, yellow and black. They are omnivores and will feed on plants, algae, carrion and any other organic matter that stays still for long enough. Despite their brave attitudes, this species is actually way down the food chain and is fed upon by everything from fish, seabirds, anemones and even crabs. Here's a better look at some captive common prawns that we found in a calf just up from the rock pools. Up 
Alongside the prawns, we managed to film one species of crab and we think one species of hermit crab. The crab that we caught on film is the most common species of crab in the UK, the shore crab. They have a shell width of up to 9 centimetres and they're usually a greeny brown colour. Behind their two front claws they have eight legs and when they run they move in the classic sideways movement that crabs are known for. Shore crabs are omnivorous and feed on many of the same foods as the common prawns and the prawns themselves. With their hard shells and defensive claws, shore crabs are surprisingly the prey item for many seabirds and various larger fish. They are also the host for the crab hacker barnacle, a parasite that castrates them and makes them carry its eggs instead of their own. In the UK there are several species of hermit crab. The most common of these, and the one I think we've found here, is the aptly named common hermit crab. Unlike real crabs, hermit crabs do not have a shell of their own and have to use the empty shells of other marine creatures. When they feel threatened, they can draw their whole body into the shell and block the entrance with their pincers. They can grow to around 4 cm in length and are found all around the UK and most of mainland Europe. We managed to find several hermit crabs whilst at West Runton, but they were all small individuals between 1 and 2 cm. Aside from the anemones, crabs and periwinkles, we managed to see lots of species of fish. With their need for speed, and our lack of it, we only managed to get sufficient footage of two of them. The lesser sand eel is the most common species of sand eel in British waters. Although not actually an eel but a small fish, it is more correctly called a sand lance. It can grow up to 20 centimetres long and is a favourite source of food for many seabirds. If you've seen a puffin with a beak full of small fish, those are probably sand eels. It has a long body with a distinctive forked tail, but its most interesting feature is its behaviour. It will dive head first into the sand to escape danger. They will actually bury themselves up to 30 centimetres deep and will hibernate under the sand during winter. During spawning, a female can lay as many as 20,000 eggs. The second fish that we managed to catch on film is the bullhead. This fish is very well camouflaged and has large, flattened pelvic fins that help it to blend in with the surrounding rocks. They can grow to around 18 centimetres long and are highly predatory. Their mouths can expand, allowing them to eat everything from shrimp and marine invertebrates to small fish, and sometimes they are even cannibals. Unsurprisingly, all of this marine life attracts other animals. Here, the black-headed gulls patrol along the tide line and pick off any unwitting fish or crustaceans. There are cormorants here too, but they are just resting up and will fly further out to sea to feed on larger fish. The wildlife at West Runton is diverse and plentiful, but in the past, an even wider variety of creatures lived here. Not only is this place great for rock crawling, also for fossil hunting, we just found this just lying in one of the rock pools, the Bellamite. This part of the Norfolk coast has a complex geological history. The beach sits upon a chalk bedrock that dates back to the Cretaceous period 
and the beach itself is made up of flint that was deposited here by Ice Age glaciers. It's in this chalk layer that you can find fossils such as the Belemnite. Breaking open the chalk rock will often reveal a bullet shaped fossil, but also you will find them just lying on the beach or in a rock pool. As the soft chalk is eroded away, the harder fossil will be left behind. Belemnites were marine animals related to the squid and cuttlefish. They became extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period around 66 million years ago, but we know a lot about them due to their common fossils. Most of the animal was made up of soft parts that don't fossilise well, but in their tail their skeleton formed a hard part called a guard or a rostrum, and it's this that I found in the rock pool. Just above the Cretaceous chalk lies the Chroma stone bed and the Roxham crag. These layers date back from over 1.8 million years ago to around 866,000 years ago. This time represents a period of warming and cooling into glacial and interglacial periods. These rocks have produced rich fossil finds including small mammals, giant beavers, deer and even elephant. These layers are significantly older than the next layer which is the west front and fresh water bed which dates to around 6 to 700,000 years ago. This is the layer of dark peaty rocks at the base of the cliffs. These rocks are a special site of scientific interest and collecting fossils from this layer is restricted. The West Runton freshwater bed contains many fossils of plants and trees, fish, mammals such as hyenas and rhinos and is the site of the famous West Runton mammoth find in 1990s which was the most complete mammoth and largest mammoth ever found in the UK. Well then everyone, the tide's come in now so we've had to move away from the beach. We've had a really good day, it's been really successful. We've seen loads of species of fish, crabs, shrimp, all sorts of stuff and we've even managed to get a spot of fossil hunting done. Now if you have enjoyed this video be sure to pop over to Greg's channel and check out the last video we worked on together and also leave a like, a comment and subscribe and anything else you can possibly do on YouTube. Thanks, Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time. It worked again. <laughs> <laughs>